Good evening and welcome to tonight's Community Trustee Forum regarding Bill 64. I'm Trustee Nicole Bowering, Chair of the Community Engagement Committee. The St. James Assiniboia School Division acknowledges that we are on Treaty 1 land, the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, Inanu and Dakota peoples, and the homeland of the Métis Nation. Back on March 15th of this year, Minister Cliff Cullen released the province's proposed Education Modernization Act, known as Bill 64. This bill is a very long legislative document that details many changes that, if ratified, will dramatically change how education is delivered and experienced in our community and province. As your Board of Trustees, we recognize that not everyone has the time or ability to delve into a 300 plus page le legislative document and others may have read it but are wondering what it means for your day to day. We hope to address some of these questions tonight. Tonight's presentation was also designed around the questions you submitted during the pre-registration process and we've done our best to answer them with the limited information provided regarding the effects of Bill 64. It is our hope that in this and future forums, we will be able to help you better understand what Bill 64 means for you and your family, so you can make the best, most informed decisions possible. Tonight's presentation will be approximately 25 minutes in length, and we hope to complete with all the question and answer period by 8.15 at the latest. Throughout this presentation, you will see a Q&A box at the top right hand of your screen, and you're encouraged to submit your questions related to tonight's presentation by clicking on that link at any time. Following the formal presentation, we will answer questions regarding tonight's presentation. Please be sure to include your first and last name and email address with your question. Questions we aren't able to answer tonight will be addressed via email or included in our next Community Trustee Forum on Bill 64. As we get started, I encourage you to actively engage and participate in tonight's event, entering your questions and comments as we go. You will be hearing from several trustees highlighting different portions of the Bill 64 legislation and how this might impact your family and our schools. First up tonight, I want to welcome trustee Holly Hunter. Holly is the chair of our education committee and during the day works as a middle years teacher in the Seven Oaks School Division. She comes tonight to speak about student learning and outcomes. Welcome, Trustee Hunter. Hello, everyone. Um, even though Bill 64 has not had its second reading, the Government of Manitoba is in the process of appointing a Provincial Curriculum Advisory Panel to help shape the Provincial Curriculum. In doing so, Pallister and Cullen have taken a page from Jason Kenney's playbook. Alberta recently completed a rewrite of their curriculum, and here's the results. 90% of elementary school teachers and 95% of principals report not being comfortable using the curriculum in their schools. More than 80% of teachers also said that they did not believe that the content was age appropriate or developmentally appropriate for children aged 5 to 11, noting that it was poorly structured and the content, content was disjointed. The new curriculum emphasizes rote memorization and there is a serious lack of attention to critical thinking skills. The underlying philosophy is at odds with what we know about how children learn. The curriculum does not reflect an appreciation for diversity and inclusion. Notably, it is lacking in Indigenous and Francophone histories, contributions and perspectives. This is in addition to inaccuracies, possible plagiarism and deep flaws in how it discusses race and colonialism. This government didn't listen to Manitoba parents or Manitoba teachers during the K-12 education review. They opted instead to focus on American free, mar free marketeers, Ted Cruz and Betsy DeVos. It's time that we make sure this government, your representatives, listen. The stakes are just too high. It's time to make your voice heard. Thank you for sharing, Trustee Hunter. Trustee Dr. Jennifer Lawson comes next to speak to distinct divisional programming, child care and community amenities. At her day job, Jennifer educates future teachers at the University of Manitoba. She represents our board as vice chairperson and is also the board representative at the Early Childhood Development Committee. Welcome, Trustee Lawson.
Trustee Lawson. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Bowering. Good evening, everyone. As a trustee and lifelong member of the St. James Assiniboia community, I'm extremely concerned about what Bill 64 might do to our schools and our neighborhood. Let's just start with childcare, for example, which is just one way that our division collaborates with our community. We have 21 childcare facilities within the schools in St. James Assiniboia. For the past 10 years, I've been the trustee representative on the Early Childhood Development Committee, which is a partnership between our local child care facilities, family resource centers and school division staff. We work as a team to develop initiatives such as the early numeracy and literacy events for parents and children, as well as joint professional development opportunities for early childhood educators and school staff. And this type of community collaboration will be lost through Bill 64. In addition, Bill 64 also mandates the lifting of the moratorium on school closures, which could lead to the displacement of childcare facilities in those schools at risk of being closed. And finally, centralizing powers will reduce local voices when it comes to how much space is allocated to childcare centers within schools and how much rent they will pay. In essence, childcare will be seriously impacted by Bill 64. We also need to consider the distinct and exceptional programs that the Board of Trustees has prioritized and funded in the St. James Assiniboia School Division. Programs such as Literacy Links, Reading Recovery, Learn to Swim, the Math Enhancement Program, Healthy Schools, Welcome to Kindergarten, Full Day Kindergarten, our True North Hockey Program and Musical Theatre could all come to an end. Even French Immersion Programming, which is prioritized in our division, could be at risk since the Franco-Manitoban programming meets federal French language requirements for the province. This could potentially allow the current government to eliminate French immersion altogether. Losing any of these exceptional programs would be such a shame for the children and families of our community. And finally, we also need to reflect on some of the community facilities that are funded all or in part by the school division. Consider the amazing tracks that we have at our senior year schools and the outdoor classrooms at our early year schools. These facilities are for community use by all, and they are only in existence because of local decision making by St. James Assiniboia School Board and division staff. Simply put, we cannot afford to lose local voice, local funding and local decision making. If Bill 64 goes ahead, our families risk losing exceptional programs, opportunities and facilities in our St. James Assiniboia community. Thank you very much. Thank you, Trustee Lawson. Trustee Craig Glennie comes next to speak of some of the financial changes proposed in Bill 64. Craig is the chair of the Finance and Facilities Committee. During the day, he is a senior manager of finance for Bell MTS. Welcome, Trustee Glennie. Thank you, Trustee Bowering. I'm speaking tonight not as a trustee, but as a parent of two young boys. One currently a student of the St. James Boy School Division and the other to enter the school system in a few years. Education has evolved over time. Today, our education system supports students and our community in more ways than just literacy and numeracy. For the sake of time, I'm going to speak to a limited number of programs and services that our school board offers. In the short time, our son has been at the St. James Boy School Division We've already taken advantage of a few of the programs and services offered. For example, his class size is under 15 students. Had our division not maintained the K320 program, two classes would have been merged and his class size would be around 30 students. As a family with two working parents, we require lunchtime supervision for our child. Currently, the St. James Assiniboia School Division supports families in the community by offering this program for free. This is financially beneficial as we already must pay for before and after school care. One of the best days in, a, in the school for our son is when his class gets access to the iPad cart for technology learning. He loves technology learning, which we as a family support highly as it's undisputed that all careers in the future will only continue to require more technological experience. And finally, 
our son loved the Literacy Links program, which helped him take his first steps into kindergarten. We can only hope that this program will be there for our second son. Approximately half of the expenses required to operate the St. James Sanboy School Division are collected from the province. This provincial funding provides a basic level of education for our students. The remaining expenses are from our local taxation. This money is used to enhance the education in our classroom, as well as provide programs and services to our students. I've had a chance to take a detailed review of the province of Manitoba's finances. With the elimination of the school tax property levy, I do not see how it would be possible for the province to fund our local schools for anything more than the base education required under the law. I don't know about you, but I do not want my children to have basic level education. I want my sons to be able to access programs, services and technology that will help them exceed and prepare them for their post-secondary education. The province also states that they will achieve $40 million in annual savings through the implementation of Bill 64. The bill states that these savings will come from administrative expenses. But the truth is, if they want to achieve these savings, they're going to have to cut deeper than simply administrative expenses. The St. James Assembly School Division has reduced its administrative costs by nearly 25 percent since 2018. Any savings that the province is hoping to achieve will need to come from programming. Also, nowhere in Bill 64 document does it say that the province of Manitoba will increase funding to schools one for one to offset the local taxation. So there's only one thing that all this can mean. It can mean no more free lunch supervision program. Parents will be required to either have their children come home from school over the lunch hour at their own transportation expense or pay up to $250 per child to stay at school. It could mean the elimination of our policy of limiting kindergarten to grade three class sizes to 20 and our continued review to keep class sizes small in all our other grades. By increasing class sizes, the province would be able to eliminate teachers and support staff, saving a significant amount of money to achieve their $40 million goals. Students will no longer be able to receive free swim lessons in grade three, because it's not part of the provincial curriculum. There'll be a possible end to the Literacy Links program, which helps our incoming students prepare for kindergarten. Elimination of our divisional choir and music programs, as there will no longer be divisional money to fund these programs. These are 100% funded by the division. A significant reduction or elimination of our high level of technology provided to students, both from our hardware and software perspective, preparing students for their future careers. The likely elimination of school-based services, such as speech pathologists, social workers, psychologists, reading clinicians, behavior intervention team, and community resource officers, and much, much more. The end of divisional grants and funding to schools for extracurricular programs, and potentially the elimination of French immersion programming and AP programming, as these are not part of the core provincial curriculum. Thank you, Trustee Glenny. Up next is Trustee Bruce Chegas. With over 30 years serving as a trustee on the St. James Assiniboia School Board and a distinguished legal career, Bruce brings a wealth of knowledge and historical context to our board discussions and community initiatives, both, so the, both as a trustee and chair of the governance committee. In recent years, we have seen early and middle school reorganizations specifically regarding the French Immersion Program. You may have even attended one of our community engagement opportunities. So keeping that in mind, Trustee Chagas comes to speak to us regarding a specific school community concern regarding Bill 64. 
Thank you and welcome Trustee Chagas. Yes, thank you and good evening. Under the terms of Bill 64, the so-called moratorium on school closings that currently exists in the Public Schools Act is to be lifted. School closings have been susp suspended since 2008 in Manitoba, with the only exception being where there is virtually 100% of the school community in agreement with the dis decision by the local board to close a school. So in the case of school closings, Bill 64 effectively paves the way for government to ignore meaningful community consultation as a centralized board would be able to close schools. As you may know, our board has closed a number of schools over the years as a result of a significant decline enrollment trend that started back in the 1980s and has extensive experience with how to ensure the community voice is heard in respect to any case where a school potentially could close due to low enrollment. The division learned from that experience and developed a comp comprehensive school review process to ensure that school and community input was considered regarding the possible closing of a local school. This government, as Trustee Glenny alluded to, has repeatedly said the intent behind Bill 64 is to shift $40 million from board office admin costs to frontline services. In the context of school closings, Bill 64 arguably prioritizes the government's primary objective of cost control over the democratic rights of local residents to have a say in the process may affect them or their children. As such, the lifting of the moratorium on school closings is a major concern from a community perspective and potentially could affect rural and urban schools across the province. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Chegas. Trustee Cheryl Smokowicz comes next to speak to us about representation and the governance changes associated with Bill 64. Cheryl is the chairperson of our Board of Trustees and currently works as a licensing officer for the Canadian Grain Commission. Welcome, Trustee Smokewich. Good evening. Thank you, Trustee Bowery. The government of Manitoba's decision to eliminate elected school boards and centralized decision making will negatively affect the education system in our province by removing local voice and accountability. As elected officials, SJAD trustees ensure that our schools are meeting the needs of their communities and that all schools within our division are working together towards the same goals. We achieve this by consulting and working with our entire community, students, staff, and parents. Bill 64 will not see the 37 Manitoba school divisions amalgamated into 15 regions. In fact, the 37 school divisions and your local voice are being abolished and replaced by one central authority, which will be a bigger, disconnected, centralized bureaucracy. The members of this provincial education authority will be appointed by the Minister of Education and report directly to the minister. The 8,500 students and their families of SJASD, along with the five other Metro school divisions currently located in Winnipeg, will be combined into one region with over 100,000 students. Each school will have a school community council, which will replace the current parent councils. One member of a school community council from each of the 15 Manitoba regions will be elected to the Provincial Advisory Council on Education, along with an elected trustee from DSFM. I have served as an elected school trustee representing the Kirkfield St. Charles Ward and the entire St. James Assiniboia School Division for almost 15 years. As a mother and a grandmother, I have a strong connection to my community schools. I am committed to represent and advocate on behalf of all children and parents in our school division. When contacted by a student, parent, or community member, I have provided guidance on many issues, including divisional policies, division contact information, guidance on presenting as a delegation at a board meeting, or even just to listen and to pro provide an opportunity to discuss a specific issue affecting their child's experience in their school. I have acted as an advocate for my community, and I believe I have dealt with these situations swiftly, respectfully, and responsibly. 
I worry how the individual school community concerns of over 100,000 students will be resolved when they are re represented by one parent on the Provincial Advisory Council on Education with no real authority. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Smokwich. Before we wrap things up and take your questions, I wanna to speak to you about advocacy relating to Bill 64. Some of you may not know that I'm mom to three kids in school, two in elementary and one in middle school. Prior to becoming a school trustee, I was and continue to be an active volunteer in my children's schools and engaged member of the corresponding parent councils. As you heard Chairperson, Chairperson Smokewitch say, the proposed changes in Bill 64 would mean that school boards no longer exist and that local representation would be replaced by school community councils in each school. This plan creates a few concerns. First, in the documents describing school community councils, there is no mention of the ability to raise funds or hold a bank balance, something that our parent councils rely on to host community events and provide additional supports to our schools. Whether your parent council is fundraising for a new place structure, school field trips, barbecues, or other community events, it remains unknown if school community councils can do the same. And it is an important question to ask of the government. According to government documents, these councils would function simply to advise the principal on school priorities and programming, staffing and policies related to school plans, and monitoring the needs of the community and school achieve, student achievement. In my experience, parent council events and initiatives are what makes our schools tight-knit communities, and the new legislation appears to remove this function from the role of parents in our schools. According to information from the province, one person would be elected from these school community councils to represent each region, ours being the entirety of the City of Winnipeg on the Parent Advisory Council on Education, which will advise the government appointed board in making decisions about education. This means our one representative would be merely advising the appointed board with no actual power to make change. Furthermore, the city of Winnipeg would only have one representative compared to the 14 rural representatives on the same council, making it even more unlikely for our area concerns to be heard or prioritized. And what are the chances that the one person elected out of the entire city is going to be able to represent our community well, or even know what makes St. James Assiniboia so special? Before I was a trustee, I went to my local trustees when issues arose that couldn't be solved at the school level. I saw how trustees stopped to fix, or sorry, stepped up to fix the situation immediately. And seeing the ability to make a difference and amplify voices in the community, the ability to advocate for others effectively is part of what drew me into my role as a trustee. I worry about how little students' voices, our voices, as parents and community members will be heard without a strong advocacy mechanism in St. James. You may have heard the Premier or his MLAs state recently that the main jobs of a trustee are setting taxation and negotiating collective bargaining agreements with our employee groups. And because the government is taking those over, trustees are no longer needed. Yes, those things are part of our job, but well over 90% of what we do is advocacy. We ensure your voice is heard and community needs are met. I receive calls, emails, and messages from community members several times a week regarding concerns ranging from lighting and security on school property to transportation to individual student needs. The best part of my job is being able to make calls for these folks and find tangible ways to address their concerns. If Bill 64 passes as proposed, I worry about who will advocate and work on behalf of students and families when issues arise. With only one elected parent advisory council representative for 100,000 students, I wonder if this person will even have time to respond concern, to concerns, let alone address them. With an appointed board focused on the concerns of those who appointed them and far removed from our community, I'm concerned the issues brought forward from a local school 
or our community won't be a priority or even make it to the table for discussion. Minister Cullen and Premier Pallister have said multiple times that parents will have more say in their children's education. But everything I'm seeing in this legislation contradicts that with fewer ways to solve problems and make a difference in your child's school and educational experience. In our forum registrations, many asked if there was any hope in changing or stopping this legis legislation. Being completely honest, it's an uphill battle to be sure. But keep this in mind, when the provincial government proposed mass amalgamations over 30 years ago, no one thought St. James would make it through unscathed. But here we are. Why, you might ask? Well, it's because the autonomy of our division was maintained because community members rose up and spoke up against the government's plan. For this bill to change, we in St. James, Assiniboia, Brooklands and Headingley need to stand up and let our voices be heard loud and clear. Our community has fought in one before and I truly believe we can do it again. If after hearing tonight's presentation, you want to speak up and are wondering how to do that, um, you can contact your area MLAs and express the concerns you have about this bill and their contact information is on the screen for your convenience. You can also register to speak to Bill 64 by calling 204-945-3636. Finally, you can speak to other parents, friends and family and help educate them regarding Bill 64 and what it will mean for our kids and our community. The more people know what's going on, the more people are able to engage in the process and ensure that our education system is meeting the needs of our children. We'll be starting the Q&A session shortly, but first, on behalf of my colleagues, I wanna thank you for taking the time to attend tonight's Bill 64 Community Trustee Forum. We know your time is valuable and we thank you for your willingness to hear about Bill 64 and what it could mean for our community if it's passed in its current form. Now let's get to your questions and you can still click on the link and uh, submit your questions if you have them as well. We did receive several great questions from the registration process and to answer as many as possible, we've grouped similar questions into theme areas. If you feel your question isn't specifically addressed tonight, please reach out to one of the trustees or email inquiries at SJASD for further clarification. First, we had a number of questions about how Bill 64 will affect special needs education. One person asked, how will Bill 64 affect my child's overall education? Will teachers be given the financial and in-class supports needed to teach all students with different learning abilities and disabilities? Trustee Lawson, can you please come to speak to this question? Absolutely. Thank you again, Trustee Bowering. It's important to understand that in some ways we do not really know how Bill 64 might affect special needs education. What we do know, however, is that St. James Assiniboia has a long history of exceptional support to students with special needs. In last year's budget, for example, our school division exceeded the metro and provincial averages in terms of funding students with exceptional needs. The problem with Bill 64 is that there are no guarantees and little likelihood that our students will be supported to the high degree that they have been under our local division and board budget decisions. There is no question that we have had many cases where principals have asked for special funding above and beyond what the province provided to support special needs students. And this division's senior admin and board have supported those requests to ensure that our students got what they needed to succeed in school. This level of service and support to our families is only possible through local decision making. So there are significant risks to placing the needs of exceptional students in the hands of a provincial governing body that has little understanding of local contexts and needs. Thank you, Trustee Lawson. You're welcome. Next, there were questions about how the legislation will impact the quality of education. One person said, Manitoba's quality of education has been lagging compared to other provinces for several years. How will the changes improve the quality of high school education and outcomes? Trustee Hunter, can you please come to speak to this question? I'd be happy to. So first, I need to address the question 
um, about whether Manitoba students are lagging behind other provinces. So when this gets put out there, usually the reason why is because the government is using PISA scores. So this is a standardized test that's administered internationally. And this is a source of data, and we can't forget about that source of data. All data is important, but this one piece of data, I don't think tells the whole story. So in Manitoba, 86% of students are performing at grade level, and the majority who are not have compounding marginalization such as poverty and family dysfunction. So rather than focusing on upending an education system that's working for the vast majority of children, attention must be paid to the small minority that it's not working for. And SJASD is already doing that work. Um, I know that I put my name forward because I saw kids falling through the crack and it broke my heart and I wanted to be part of the solution. And some of the things that we've done here is, for example, the number one assessment criteria on our draft superintendent evaluation is student growth and achievement. This means the student or the superintendent is personally responsible and accountable to the board for the performance of all of our students. I fear that when we move away from this and into a provincial system where Winnipeg is represented by only one director of education, our students will just be a data point. They will no longer get that time and attention and a care that they need in order to succeed. So I think truly the education system is working for most kids um, and moving towards a centralized system is not going to be helpful for the ones that it's not working for. Thank you, Trustee Hunter. Many of you are also wondering about the proposed school community councils. One person asked, is it true that parents will be tasked with the responsibility to oversee a school division on a volunteer basis? Um, we know that our school community councils will be in a similar way to our parent councils volunteer positions and from the government um, documents that have come out, it's clear that they expect parents to be actively engaged in those community councils. As for the one representative for Metro Winnipeg, it remains unclear if that person will receive any compensation. It was not outlined in the documents. We um, expect that the appointed board that's appointed by the province to oversee education will be compensated, but we haven't yet heard details about the Parent Advisory Council on Education and if there will be any compensation for that particular role. Um, moving on, one person asked, what does this mean with regards to funding for schools like high school extracurricular programs, supplies, etc.? Trustee Glenny, would you be able to come and speak to that, please? For sure. <laughs> the easy answer, is we don't know. But what we do know is that today these funds come from the property uh, tax levy and are distributed by the school board. As I said previously, uh, I struggled to understand where these funds will be coming from if the funding model shifts to provincial funding. What's even more concerning to me especially is there is a very high chance that no one on the appointed education board or the parental board will have any connection to St. James to even know about the programming and extracurricular programming we've had, including the divisional choirs uh, and all that and school sports. It, it's, it's a concerning thing to me, especially all the benefits of extracurricular activities uh, for kids and for our community. So, uh, I have no idea and can't really answer where they'll be coming from, but all I do know is I can't find the money where it would be coming from. Okay, thank you, Trustee Glenny. It is hard with, um, not a lot of details have come out with the government documents. There's the big um, legislative document that really doesn't speak to any of these things. And then the smaller, um, more human language documents that the government has put out have made it a challenge to understand what some of the like day-to-day -day impacts would be for our life here in St. James. So it is hard to know some of these answers, but just based on our experience as the Board of Trustees and, and the decisions that we are making for the community on a daily basis, this is what we're basing this information on. 
So another person asked, how is Bill 64 going to support French immersion students and families? Um, now, I mentioned earlier, I have three kids. They are in the French immersion program, and it's a program that I, I'm passionate about as well. And um, I will be honest, it, there's nothing that says that French immersion won't continue as is, but there's nothing that's saying that it will be um, prioritized or um, taken care of. About 30% of our students in St. James Assiniboia School Division are enrolled in the French Immersion Program. It's something that we have made a strong focus, something that we have prioritized and um, looked at ways to improve language acquisition and use best teaching practices to ensure students are receiving the best French Immersion education they can in that program stream. Um, it is, as uh, Trustee Lawson said, Having the DSFM, the Franco-Manitoban School Division, does satisfy the need for French language education in the province. So if the province decided that it's too expensive to have a French stream and it's making um, too much niche programming, they could say, we already satisfy this um, we already satisfy this need for Frank, French programming in our in our province and we don't need to have the French immersion programming. Now, I don't know if you've seen French immersion parents before, but I don't know that that would be a wise decision. Um, but I have not seen anything that has said that there will be um, supports or even representation on any of the um, boards that will exist with um, people who are um, able to speak to French immersion programming and the importance of that option for students. One person said, I have seen lots of negative reasons against the bill, but what are the positive reasons for the recommendation? I haven't really seen any except admin, save, admin cost savings. Um, it's another finance one. Trustee Glennie, can you please come to speak to that one? For sure. Um, just to start out, we as a board have been awaiting the K-12 education review with optimism and excitement. Uh, we all agree that changes do need to be made to our education system to modernize it. In fact, the K-12 Education Review had several positive changes to education within it. Uh, it even recommended keeping school divisions and trustees. Unfortunately, Bill 64 and the legislation does not align with this K-12 Education Review, which the province paid a lot of money for and received a lot of input from professionals in the community. Different individuals will have different takeaways from Bill 64. What one person sees as a positive, another will see as a negative, and that's the same with you know most legislation. But what I am confident in saying is that as a parent of a student in the system, this bill has virtually no positive attributes. In fact, I would even argue that the admin cost savings of this bill are unattainable. My fear is that once the province realizes that they can achieve the targeted admin savings, where are these savings going to be coming from to reach their $40 million goal? And that is what is scary. So thanks, Nicole. Thanks, Trustee Glennie. Um, we did have a few questions come in in the um, registrations regarding staffing and how it relates to Bill 64. Um, I'm going to ask Chairperson Smokewitch to come and speak to that, please. Thank you, Trustee Bowring. Although we received questions on staffing, we are here tonight to discuss governance issues, which is the role of trustees. As more information becomes available from the pro provincial government on Bill 64, we will provide that information to our community. But please be assured that our senior administration team, along with our school administration, union leadership, will provide the most current information that impacts staffing when and if it becomes available. Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson Smokewitch. Um, next up, someone was wondering, will this affect catchment, as in um, the school catchment areas? Trustee Chagas, would you be able to come and speak to that, please? Yes, thanks very much. Yes, as you mentioned, the question is referring to catchment area in relation to our schools. That is the area from which a school's pupils are drawn. So presumably, Bill 64, at least at 
once it's passed, will have no uh, uh, recognizable impact on current school catchment areas. However, uh, thinking it forward, the new regions which are referred to as regional catchment areas in the bill can determine the number and type of schools in each region. So I think we can all assume that over time, schools and school programming will be harmonized across the entire region. So this could definitely have an impact as to where students will attend uh, in the particular region that they're in. So looking at Winnipeg, it's a good example where Bill 64 may not have an immediate impact in this particular issue, but long term there are major implications in a region as diverse as the city of Winnipeg. So that's what we can do at this point is speculate, I guess. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Chagas. I know my uh, my sister-in-law's family lives in Vancouver, BC, and uh, they wanted their kids to get into French immersion school. And to do that, they had a school about a block down the street from their house, and they had to enter a lottery uh, to possibly be chosen for their children to attend there, along with students from across the city of Vancouver. So we don't know if that's how it's going to work out in this situation, but we see in other areas where a, a region expands and allows for the out of catchment area to be instead of the rest of St. James, the rest of the city of Winnipeg, presumably you could have students in Transcona vying for the same spaces in the school, um, you know, by your daycare a few minutes from your house, but just on the other side of your catchment line um, as you would have and you'd be in the same consideration because you would both be out of the immediate catchment line. So um, definitely something that could become a concern. Someone wrote in to ask, will there be other options for remote learning as this pandemic continues, at least until children and youth can be vaccinated? So not really a Bill 64 question, but uh, Trustee Hunter, would you like to come and speak to that, please? Yeah. So I think one thing that's important to note is uh, St. James has been a leader throughout this pandemic. When the province was adamant that children were not going to wear masks in schools, it was SJASD that pushed to have our children wearing masks and went the next step to make sure that those were distributed to all children free of charge. When the province was looking for partners to increase access and the quality of remote learning, it was SJASD who again stepped up and were instrumental in getting the Manitoba Remote Learning Support Center up and running. Bill 64 is not coming into effect until July 1st, 2021. And I just have to remain hopeful that by that point that this pandemic might be behind us. Um, however, I really can't speak to what the government plans to do regarding remote learning once uh, the Provincial Education Authority takes over. Thank you, Trustee Hunter. And by, she meant to say July 1st, 2022. Um, but yes, we know um, some parts of this could actually come into play this fall as well. Um, lastly, from our, our pre-registration questions, one person asked, the board provide a formal response to the Manitoba government Minister of Education on Bill 64 and is there a draft available for the public to review? What's the timeline? And I'll ask uh, Chair Smokewich to come and speak to that one as well, please. Thank you. Uh, Trustee Holly Hunter is registered to speak on behalf of SJASD as there can only be one person per organization. Since the delay of the second reading of this bill, the presentations are expected to take place in the fall of 2021. Because sweeping changes are being proposed regarding education, we encourage individuals to register to speak on Bill 64, the Education Modernization Act. These presentations are expected to be done virtually and last no longer than 10 minutes each. The opportunity to submit a written presentation is also available. More information on Bill 64 is available on the SJASD website, as well as a link to the Manitoba School Boards Association's Local Voices, Local Choices. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Smokewich. Um, we're at our time for the evening, but I do want to take a couple of the live questions that we received in the Q&A. Um, so the first one is, how can the government decide to go along with this when every single community and sector of the city has different needs and worries? And um, Chair Smokewich, I'm going to ask you to come back and speak to that one if, uh, if you're okay. 
I'm sorry, I was just responding to a text. Oh, uh, I'll read it again. How can the government decide to go along with this plan when every single community and sector of the city has different needs and worries? <laughs> I can't answer for the government, I'm sorry. I have no idea. That's my answer. Sorry, <laughs> doesn't make any sense. That's okay. Yeah, I think um, I think this was largely a financially driven decision and uh, the, the concerning part, and if you've had a chance to read through the documentation showing um, the K-12 review, um, the, the items that came out in the re review and the recommendations were actually largely not followed by the government when they brought out Bill 64. And so that's the confusing part is that we don't believe that there's nothing to be gained through a look at how to make the education system better. We're doing it all the time at the board table. But when recommendations come down from um, a group of people who you've hired and paid a lot of money to decide what would make our education system more effective, um, and that is basically thrown out and something totally different is brought forward, um, it, it does leave a lot of questions that we really can't answer because it's hard to see um, the path forward when the experts weren't really listened to. Um, the next question that came through, uh, the Premier said today that education would be funded via income tax. Do you know if that will provide sufficient funding levels for all of these important programs? I'm going to ask uh, Trustee Glenning to come for that one, please. Thank, thank you, Trustee Bowery. So to um, answer this pretty simply, 50% of all the expenses that cost to operate our division, program, services, education, comes from the province. 50% comes from taxation on the, the provincial tax or on our, sorry, property taxation. That 50% from the province actually doesn't fully cover base education. And when I say base education, I'm talking 30 students per classroom, salaries for the teachers, heating, air conditioning, building, that, that's it. So could it cover? Well, it's going to have to take some money, extra money from the income tax pot to just cover base education. Now, if you're talking pro on top of that, programs, services, we've talked special needs tonight, we talked French immersion tonight, we've talked um, extracurricular tonight, those are all on top of that. And I really struggle to see how the government plans, as they say, to balance a budget going forward without raising taxes, but provide uh, the, they can't, with that, they, I cannot envision them keeping the same quality of uh, programs and services um, with that. So that's how I'll answer that. I, I really struggle to see how the, they'll be able to um, continue the funding for programs and services. Thank you, Trustee Glenny. Um, the next one was, will you post this information after on the website? Yes, um, actually we plan to post this presentation. Um, as well, um, we do have plans to make a Q&A document to be distributed. So um, I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, the last question we'll take here before we wrap up is, how much of this is an effort to degrade the quality and desirability of the public school system so as to push the proliferation of a landscape of private charter schools. Um, Trustee Hunter, I'm going to ask you to come and speak to that one, please. Yeah, for sure. Um, again, I can't really speak to what the motivations of the government are, but uh, Minister Gertson, who was the previous education minister, did very publicly say that independently funded schools and home schools are part of the Public Schools Act. We know that um, that there is a, a lot of regard for that part of the education system. And, and personally, as someone who attended public school, who um, now currently works in uh, the public education system, I, I'm really worried about uh, the impact that this will have for the public education system. Thank you, Trustee Hunter, me too. <laughs> um, we'll have to leave it there for the live questions, but if you have questions you'd like to keep submitting, please do so. The chat is uh, still open for you to submit those questions. Um, and if you think of any other questions or comments, 
regarding this event or Bill 64, please submit your questions and feedback to inquiries at sjasd.ca. Again, that's inquiries at sjasd.ca or visit our website at www sjasd.ca. For those questions we couldn't get to tonight, we will be creating a Q&A document to share with our schools and be hosting more parent community and staff specific forums in the coming months. So stay tuned for those. Once again, we are so thankful that you were able to join us tonight. We know your time is precious and we hope you have a great evening. Good night.